Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the tank review, and this time we're doing the Object 752, which has taken me taken me a little while to get done. And the reason being is I was attempting to get the win rate above 50%, which I have absolutely failed miserably at. Where are we? Let's see. 41%, my friends. 34 battles, 41%, a mere 860 experience a game. Surviving 41% of the battles, 79% hits. I guess we're going right into the stats. 1.38 damage, destruction 2.25, armor use 0.69. Man, none of those feel like 41% win rate. I'm going to tell you, it's been rough, my friends. However... My D DPG is relatively low. If we look over here at how the tank is doing overall, 1,863 is barely above the average on the server, which, oh, by the way, the average win rate is 52.02. It is the second best tier nine heavy tank. Also the second best premium tank. It is a premium. It's being played a whole bunch a win rate differential is plus 30.36, which is pretty good. So it's actually doing really nicely. What is my problem? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It is something I am doing, whatever it is. We'll keep working on it. I have some ideas. We'll see how it goes. But here's the tank. And it is a, uh, it's a tough little bugger. It's small for a pre or for a heavy tank. It, it really is a medium sized tank. It has an auto loader, three shells, relatively front loaded, but you know, it's almost mid sort of front turret on it. There are four crew members in it. You can see my crew right there. The commander is the commander and the radio operator. Then you have a gunner, driver, and loader. Remember it is a auto loader type tank with three shells 390 alpha if we go down here you'll see that the standard pen is 240 which is pretty good and you get 310 out of the APCR which can be a little anemic at times when you're dealing with the really heavily armored tier 9 and tier 10 stuff but it's not heat which is nice because heat has its own problems so you, you give up a little bit of the pen but you don't have to deal with the heat right there my setup I have two of them right now this isn't my Q for 100 battle challenge. We'll see how we how we go after 100 battles, but I'm running a vert stab and IA, and I'm actually running this mobility improvement system because this is about as good as any of the turbos, plus it gives you some bonuses to dispersion wall movement and things like that. I do have a secondary setup, so this is more of a longer range sniping type speed and a little bit more accurate on the gun this is going to allow me to on the more open maps hopefully be a little more competitive if we go to the second setup we are running hardening vert stab and vents you will notice that and this is for more close-in stuff you will notice that there is no rammer right it's an auto loader so there's no ability to put the rammer back to the crew real quick i am running brothers in arms i do have three skills working on the fourth one and i am running food Large kits, a pure APCR loadout other than three HE. It does have 30 shells. That's a little bit light on shells. I haven't really run into a problem with that though. If you, but if you're doing a lot of sniping, uh, you might come closer. You might have an issue with running out of shells or very long games or a combination of the two. Realize though that the relatively long reload on this thing for mine, the way it's set up, 29 seconds. We'll switch over to this and see how much that changes. 30 seconds or so. Because of the 30 second reload and the relatively fast games, you won't run into a problem with the ammo very often, but it could happen. So that's my setup, my crew. This gives me 30 second total reload, 3.2 between shells with three shells at 390 alpha, minus eight gun depression, which is actually pretty good. Aiming time 3.17, dispersion for my setup at 0.34. DPM very low at 1901, even with all the bonuses in here, food and everything else. That is one thing that this tank does suffer a little bit, despite having 390 alpha, which is nice. In a decent burst in nine seconds or so, nine to 10 seconds, you can put out almost 1200 damage. 
However, you're now eating a 30 second reload. Remember, it's an auto loader, not an auto reloader. So it will take the entire 30 seconds before you're back into the fight. Survivability is where this thing starts to shine a little bit. We've got 195 on the hole, which is very tough. 330 on the turret. You can see the hole is angled. Not, a, not quite as angled as many of the Soviet tanks, but very thick. 330 on the turret is pretty amazing. How some ever. Look at these hatches. We'll take a look at that with the uh, armor look-see. But yeah, that those things will collect uh, more shots than your mom on Friday at the bar. All right, fellas. That was a little bit mean, but also this tank has me feeling that way, if I'm honest. Mobility is pretty good at 40, 17 reverse. I am running field mods. We'll talk about those in just a second. So decent mobility. Camo, almost non-existent. 441 view range. I don't have anything helping me out with the view, so I'm not quite maxed out on that. If we go over to the field mods, I am running the lightweight suspension, which is helping with traverse and a little bit negative on the crossing all terrain types. I have the parallax adjustment, which is minus three to aiming size, plus five to aiming speed. I am running the periscope electric drive, which is giving me the extra view range. That's really the only reason I'm even close to max. And we have the power output tuning, giving me two kilometers more backwards, which is nice, but I'm minus 10 turret traverse and gun traverse. It has a decent turret and gun traverse. We'll look at that in just a second. Minus 10% doesn't hurt it a whole bunch. Let's take a look at a comparison. And I would say, usually I say amongst its peers, but it doesn't really have any. There isn't any, there aren't any other tier nine autoloader premiums. However, there is the T54E1 autoloader and we put it up against the Concept B, which is actually uh, number one, Concept 1B, which is number one on the hit list for tier nine heavies. So 390 damage is right in there. Penetration is a little bit lower than those. Other fellers, 32 seconds to get three shells in the 752, 34 seconds to get four shells with the 5041, plus a little bit, no, actually you're still 390, never mind. So you're adding another two seconds to that to get another whole shell of 390. You'll see the difference here because at the DPM, the T5041, which is a tech tree tank, is a, has 400 more DPM. Wow. 2,276 for the Concept 1B. So that is that is a bit of a failure point for the, seven, the 752. Yes, the burst is nice. Yes, it's a tough tank, but it does take a while to get the damage down range. All right, armor, check it out. This is what we talked about. You gotta love this, 195, 330, very thick sides as well. 140 on the hull, 150 on the turret itself. Much higher than the other two right here. Mobility, as discussed, 35, never mind, was up to about 40 with the turb, turb ski thing going on right there and 15 backwards, but not bad. Not quite as fast as the Concept 1B right there. Remember, these traverse speeds will take a hit based on the field mods I have set up, and concealment's only up to 7%. This is, remember, no equipment, no bonuses of any kind, just 100% crew is what I'm showing you right here in this comparison. View range 391, which is a little lower than the other two. So what do we have here? We have a relatively low DPM tank with some pretty excellent armor and it's kind of a small silhouette as well, so not easy to hit, except that if you're going to get in close and do punchy face, then you've got to be really cognizant of the turret hatches because they will collect the aforementioned shots, as I said a moment ago. So let's go actually check that out and what it looks like. So, right, okay, 330. 330 turret thickness, except for these great big, I mean, these are approaching American tumor sized weak spots. Now let's not get too excited because they're not quite that bad. Also, this is a small tank. So they are relative. These are relative. They, the size relative to the model looks big, but they're much smaller than the big tumors on American hatches or on American turrets. However, for a Russian tank, these are massive. So you're going to need to be doing some moving and shaking of the turret a little bit. Any kind of right to left movement you can make. But I'm telling you what, I don't, mm, yeah, these are just going to get peppered, guys. They really are. And then look at this. This is this is a really tough front end right here. It takes a lot to go through this thing. If you're looking down, yeah, that's better. But wow, pretty awesome. Side scraping capability is nice. I think this is spaced armor. Yeah, there's 20, 
20 uh, millimeters spaced armor right here. So that's a problem. There is a nice little space right here where we can shoot through without getting into the tracks too badly. But it's angled. Check that out. Even that has an angle down below. It's shaped like a boat kind of idea. So a compact, heavily armored tank with some fairly significant weak spots. Even there's even one right here, actually. There's another that's the driver's hatch or driver's viewport, whatever. So there's another one on the hole, but you probably don't want to be shooting that when you can see these dudes, and you're probably always going to be seeing these dudes or almost always seeing these dudes when you're seeing that right there. You know, it's 0.69 was my armor use on this with these numbers you'd expect it to be closer to 1.0 but it's got significant weak spots so that's where it falls down just a little bit yes it's tough but if someone knows what they're doing you're going to collect those shots right there let's take a look at some gameplay for the 752 i've got one game for you frankly i don't have a lot of great games in it as you can see my my dpg is relatively low just barely above the average this is not an amazing game i've had a couple decent games in it but I do find myself getting caught out with the 30 second reload at it being a, it's interesting because it's a heavily armored auto reloader. So that, that kind of draws you into maybe getting into the heavily armored spots, but that 30 second reload, if you're close in and you've got guys who can poke out and take shots at you can be difficult to manage. Probably part of my problem. So let's take a look at some gameplay. For the sample gameplay, we're here on Himmel's Corellia Dorf. Spawned into the north, we're on an encounter battle, so we'll head over towards the cap right here. Decent speed, obviously the char and the sturb are faster, but we're cruising along. We're going to try to get up into this northwest corner and have a bit of face punching up here. We got a char, a sturb, I mean, look at the sturb. Got to love the sturb forward event right there. Guy's not kidding around. Cruise along here, we'll hope to not soak up a shot in the side. It's really easy to get, there it is. Yep, you gotta love map design like that. So the Leopard takes a big chunk, 454, nice high roll for that guy out of the side of my tank. At least I think it's a high roll, not sure what their alpha is. So we eat a shot and now we're into the brawl. This is before actually I changed to carrying just about uh, full APCR load. Getting away with some shots right there. Fix the gun. Gun gets ganked immediately. Three shots, three hits. That has not been my experience with this tank. That's why this game is decent. And I'm showing it to you because even though I didn't zoom in all the way, I got all those hits. Probably should have let those zoom, but of course, the longer you sit there, the longer you're exposed and maybe I collect some more shots back. So it's always a trade-off with how you're exposing your tank to get shots. There's the long while I babble. All right, 30 seconds to get back into the fight, right? These guys are all up there shooting back and forth and I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting. Now I've got a nice burst potential, right? I can help clean guys up, put the hurting on people. So we'll come on in here, see if we can hit this guy. No, yeah. All right, so yes, I'm sniping the Tortoise. Okay, fully zoomed, it hit where I was aiming. Not this tank's strength, to be honest with you. And there you go. So I got one out of two. Down goes the tortoise. And I'm on a reload. So that was the shot that was presented, right? I had a pretty strong Chieftain P turret. I'm probably never going to pin anything on the Minotauro on its turret. The tortoise is just sitting there. He's not even jiggling. So I'm going to take that opportunity to see what I can do about putting shots in the weak spot. That's the shot I had. And that's kind of one of the things about a tank like this with relatively crummy accuracy and a three shot auto loader I spent three shots trying to hurt the Taurus and only got one out of three picking your shots is really important with a tank like this and sometimes you're not given great opportunities I see the char coming in I'm still on a reload I'm really hoping I can bounce one of these shots see if we can put an angle on him nope he's pinned me twice now sure there we go can we get one hey we bounced one good can we bounce another one that's three shots Good, great. We bounced two out of four. I'll take that. I'll take that. He's zinging around. I should out-reload this guy. I'm hoping the Sturve can come in and give me some help. We also have a Leopard pushing around. <laughs> Char is just driving around behind us. Sturve turns around and decides to take out the Leopard. 
I think that's probably a, a good decision right there. The char was not a threat in terms of immediate as he's driving around reloading. So he kills the thin skin, the leopard. I'm wondering if the char is going to come at me right here. Minus eight gun depression, so we can work spots like this. Tried to track him, didn't happen. Great. Auto aim. No, okay, so guys, see see how the uh, server reticle is lagging? How the reticle is lagging behind this guy? All right, so I'm actually aiming right there. So if you have right, a lot of right to left or left to right, uh, it's better to aim manually than try to auto aim them or wait till they start going something like that where they're kind of straight away. So I, I blow that whole thing in terms of auto aiming. Try to ram this guy. I, I'm not sure if he's out of shells. He might have one. Yeah, he does have one left. Look at that. He just, whatever. He doesn't care. Just penning me. <laughs> Look at that. Right through there. <laughs> I don't know. Where's the armor? Well, actually, we're not bad off, guys. We're 2,360 bounce, even though we're down to 147 hit points. So we didn't bounce everything coming our way, but we bounced a significant amount. I'm wondering if he's trying to get around the side. I'm not sure if he actually has a shell or not. Looks like he does not. Otherwise, it might have... Pro yeah, he does not. So he's trying to reload. I thought at the time, because I hadn't counted his shells, that he was maybe trying to get around the side for his last shell to be sure that he could take me out. But it looks like he had fired all four of his. I bet if I go back, I'd be able to see it all. The problem is, a lot of times you can pay attention to it as we're sitting here in 1G and go, oh yeah, there's his fourth shot. But in the when you're in the middle of it, trying to maneuver your tank and do all the rest of the things you're doing, sometimes you miss that. Chieftain P comes out. Look at that. Snap worked. All right. Super stupid low roll of 317. Awesome. Don't really know why this guy's doing this. Okay. Probably because the game is now 13 to 7. He had guys coming up behind him, so he might as well take a chance. Which is what it looks like he did. We'll go hold down here. What is this Chieftain P doing? Is he gonna come around the corner? Should I hit C? Should I reload? Alright, fellas, this is those this is one of those decisions, and I find myself more often than not on the wrong side of this one, choosing when to reload so I can have three shells. I only have one. Could have pressed it a while ago, but if I press it, then does the Chieftain charge me and I don't have any shells? Let's see how this thing plays out. I'm looking at it going, oh crud. Well, maybe I can get a shot on this guy. All right. Nope, we'll just stab. Didn't work. Took a chance. He gets thumped. I'm on a 30 second reload. If I drive in there right now, now the Minotaur is not a problem, but if I drive at this Chieftain, he may, maybe swings around and kills me. But now he's losing all his hit points, so I'm basically out of the fight here. He gets thumped by everybody and their dog. Looking for his last shot. I'm just waiting for a reload to happen. Come on, baby. Don't get him, folks. Let me get the kill. Nope. And that's that. No kill for me. 3,524 damage. 2,760 bounce, so it can be tough in terms of armor. But I did take some random shots from the char as he just raged around. That sort of surprised me, to be quite honest. Where did I collect those shots? It looks like... Right there, maybe a bit of a look down. There's one in my gun, which I don't know if that was necessarily a, a shot that did damage. There are definite bounces off the front of the tank. Did I collect any in the hatches? It does not look so, look to be so. Hard. There's one right there, right in the side. So there's a flat spot on the armor. So no surprise, that's probably one of the shots right there that the char went through. Not a surprise that he went through right there. I don't know if he was auto-aiming me, but that looks like about center of mass, potentially. Might have been where he was shooting with his, with his auto-aim. So, like any tank, there are places that can be pinned. Just because you have 330 on the front doesn't mean you're not vulnerable to other spots. So there you go. It can be a tough little bugger. The thing is, I dropped some pretty good damage, but what else was going on up in that corner, fellas? What else was going on is I had a lot of help. There were a lot of other tanks around. I, I was not the sole focus, and that's always a good idea, but especially for an autoloader like this, being able to pop out, take your shots, and get back without being the sole focus of the enemy return fire. And that's a trick. So when you get into situations like this where you're allowed to reload and bring your firepower in and then get away, reload and bring your firepower in, this kind of tank can be absolutely powerful, but that's tricky on a tank that with this much armor that you kind of want to be up forward. So there you go. Gameplay in the 752. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up.
Well, what's my opinion of the Object 752? It's clearly a pretty good tank. It's doing well. We'll see where it shakes out over time. But it already sits in the second spot, so I think we may have finally seen a Tier 9 Premium tank. Remember, this is a Tier 9 Premium. If you go in here and click the Research button, you can find out what the bonuses are, and you will see that it actually does make credits. It makes bonds at Tier 9, so it's it's the all-rounder, fellers. Makes all the extras, all the extras. We may have finally seen a Tier 9 Premium release, not just a reward tank that's on the slightly overpowered side. Why I can't make it be overpowered, that's a great question. I'll continue to work on that myself. There's a couple things I think I'm doing that I could probably do better. A little bit of unluck, but I will take responsibility for the 41%. I'm really hoping I can get to 100. Uh, I would love to be significantly above 50. We'll see what happens with that, but it's a good tank, so don't let my results in it deter you from playing this thing. It can be a bit of a beast. Be careful about those turrets, hatches. Uh, you will collect shots right there. Be careful about getting forward with an autoloader with a 30 second reload. So I think really if you played a lot like a T54E1 with a bit more armor, you might be in the right, you might be in the right ballpark on how to play this thing. Decent mobility, good armor, decent burst. Does take a while to get the damage going because his DPM is low and 30 second reload. There you go. That's my opinion on it. It's uh, it's better than I can do with it at the moment. All right. Let me know what you think down below. If you have any advice or ways that you play it, that kind of stuff. Everybody else could benefit from that. Hell, I could probably benefit from that as well. Chuck it down there in the comments. I really appreciate everybody checking out the channel, supporting it, all that good stuff. If you like what you saw, give me a subscribe. We will see ya.